Hello guys, I welcome you to this video lecture series on quantum mechanics. In the last lecture, we discussed about inner product and the related properties of inner product. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss more about this inner product using some examples. We are also going to discuss about how we can represent any vector space in terms of matrices and how we can do the inner product operation using these matrices and why why the matrix representation is so important when discussing about inner product we say that if i have vector psi one and vector psi two the inner product between vector psi one and psi two will be a scalar number and in general this scalar number is a complex number so said that the actual operation depends on the vector space so the actual operation is vector space dependent We say a particular operation to be a inner product if and only if it satisfies certain properties, and those properties are psi one inner product of psi one and psi two should give me a complex number, and the inner product should be anti-symmetric. So if I change to k and k to graph, then I should get a complex conjugate of a scalar number, and this is generally a complex number. This is the first property to be satisfied by that particular operation. The second property that needs to be satisfied is that the inner product should be linear. What I mean by linear is that first I want to take the inner product of psi one a psi two. Psi three, then it should be equal to a times psi one, psi two, plus b times psi one, psi three. Bra a psi one plus bra a bra b psi two. I want to take inner product of this with let's say psi three. Then this should be equal to a star psi one psi two plus b star of psi one psi three and psi two psi three. Instead of representing something like this, I can also represent it something like this: a psi one plus b psi two. This whole thing is the same thing because this multiplication will give me the vector in a dual space, and this multiplication is also going to give me the same vector in a dual space. And the same thing. If I take it with inner product with psi three, then it would be a star psi one psi three plus b star psi two. The four properties that need to be satisfied: the inner product is anti-symmetric. So let here anti-symmetric property, and the second property that need to be satisfied is linearity. So the inner product is linear. The third property that needs by the operation to be qualified as an inner product operation is if I take inner product of psi one with psi one itself, then it should be greater than or equal to zero, and it is equal to zero if and only if psi one is a null vector. If all these three properties satisfied by a given operation, we say that that given operation can be used as a inner product operation. Practically, it's 
same similar that there may, may be many operation which will satisfy this particular kind of property but in reality there are very few operation that satisfy this particular reality and as we need to satisfy these three property if i change the vector space the operation will change let me explain it using some example the inner product is a extension gradient dot product for vector space right so whatever the dot product is for euclidean space inner product is for the vector spaces so if i take a inner product or dot product of two euclidean vectors then it is given by a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 right that's how we write a inner product a dot product a is equal to a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap and b is equal to b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap this is how we write our dot product now here what we have done we have just taken the component of this vector and added them together this will give me some scalar number right and it satisfies all these properties three properties so it qualifies as the inner product now let's consider a matrices vector so let's say uh, i am going to consider two by two matrices so a b c d this is one matrix let's say a vector a and i have e f g h another vector let's say b so this is vector a and this this is vector b so what will be a dot b i write it in this particular form something like this can i write it something like this no i cannot write it because this is a multiplication of component these are matrices can i write something like multiplication of two matrices no if i multiply these matrices these are 2 by 2 matrices if i multiply two 2 by 2 matrices i am going to get another 2 by 2 matrix this is not a scalar number then the inner product a into b is defined as x of matrix a into matrix b and this matrix a since this is a bra this matrix need to be a complex adjoint a inner product with b will be equal to simply equal to a star b star c star and d star this is the complex adjoint i have taken the transpose and taken a complex conjugate of that and b is simply b vector b so that would be c f g h and i'm going to take trace of the product multiply these two matrices i'm going to take a trace so that would give me trace of let's say this multiplication give me something like i j k l i'm going to take trace of this matrix i j k l which is equal to i plus l this is l l and this will be some scalar the operation used over here for matrices is very different than what we use for euclidean vector let's take another example now suppose i have function vector space now if i have let's say a vector a as a pop x some function which only depend on x and b let's say g of x which also depends on x what will be a dot b can i take just the multiplication of f of x with g of x that will give me another function it's not a scalar number however if i do something like this if i take integration with some limit 
if of x star multiplied by g of x dx this will give me some number please note i have taken complex quantity a over here is a bit so this is again way different than for what we have said for matrices for matrices it will be a trace of product matrix for Euclid and vector space it is multiplication of component and addition of them so in short you you would realize that the inner product calculation depends on what kind of vector space I have here the operation is different here the operation is different and here the operation is different so it seems very complicated you need to keep track of what vector space you are dealing with and what is the inner product of that but can be simplified so since what I'm trying to say is that since this inner product A with B is extension of our dot product so can I use the same method that I have used for dot product which is multiplication of component and addition of them together for the vector spaces for that I require two things first thing is that I need A to be represented as in the form of components and similarly obviously B also is going to be represented in some component form and suppose the component of A is A1 A1, A2, A3, so on and so forth component of B is B1, B2, B3 and so on and so forth then I need to represent A dot B as A1 star B1 plus A2 star B2 plus A3 star B3 plus so on and so forth so can I do something like this that's our end and if it is so now I don't care what kind of vector space I am talking about whether it is a Euclidean vector space whether it is a matrices vector space whether it is a spin vector space I don't care about those particular things so can I represent something like this something like this which is same as the dot product we know that in vector spaces a vector space has some set of basis vectors right? they can be finite in number they can be infinite in number they can be discrete they can be continuous ve uh, basis vectors right? so if I have basis for a vector space then I can represent any vector let's say vector A I can represent as A1 E1 plus a2 e2 plus a3 e3 plus one and so forth so using this is i can represent any vector in the form of component but what will happen if the basis is continuous if the basis is continuous that time i will not have some discrete basis vectors like e1 e2 e3 and so on and so forth the basis vector will also be continuous vector right so let's start from the beginning so if i have a vector space then i can classify this vector space depending on what kind of basis i have if the basis is discrete then i have some sort i have this is vector space and if the vector space is continuous I have continuous basis vector space what is the example of discrete basis vector space the example of discrete basis vector space is matrices Euclidean vector what is the example of this 
Kocam. Komşam vektör. Now please note that in some discrete vector spaces, the dimension of these vector spaces can be finite or infinite. It doesn't matter. So I could have a discrete vector space with infinite dimension, or I could have a continuous vector space with finite dimension. It's not about the dimension of a vector space. It's about how the basis vectors are. Whether I can distinguish, I can say that okay, this is one, this is my first basis vector. This is my second basis vector. This is my third basis vector. And there is a finite difference between the first basis vector and second basis vector. So they are discrete. As an example, number one, two, three, these are discrete numbers. So all integers. Are discrete numbers. On the other hand, the real numbers are continuous. Whatever is the difference between these integers and real number, that is the difference between the similar is the difference between a discrete basis set and a continuous basis. So matrices. In case of matrices, I have some discrete matrices. Let's say even if it is the infinite dimensional vector space. If it is the infinite dimensional vector space, I know that that matrix will be infinity cross infinity matrix. But I know that the first basis vector will be one zero 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 up to infinity, and all other elements zero. This is my first basis vector. The second basis vector will be first element zero, first row all first row zero, second row first element zero, second element one, all other side zero. This is infinity cross infinity matrices. This is also infinity cross infinity matrices. So this is I can distinguish. This is different and this is different. So these are discrete basis. In case of function, the basis set is not discrete. The basis set is continuous. So if we have a continuous basis set, what is going to happen? That we are going to discuss later. Okay, we will separately discuss about continuous basis set, but in today's lecture, we will discuss about what is going to happen. If it is discrete. Now, if I have a discrete basis vector space, then I know that I can represent any vectors in a vector space using linear combinations of the basis vector. So. If I want to represent a, I can write a as a one e one plus a two e two plus a three e three and so on and so forth. Where e one e two e three are the basis vectors. Since the choice of basis vector is not linear, we are going to choose orthonormal basis vector. Why we are going to choose orthonormal basis vector? That will be clear when we discuss example. Okay. So a vector can be represented as something like this, and a gate I can represent since these are discrete numbers. I can represent this as a column matrix, as a one, a two, a three, so on and so forth. And as we know that bra a is equal to adjoint of A in terms of matrices will be row matrix with all complex elements. So, bra A will be a row matrix and K A will be a column matrix. Okay, and the inner product of let's say A with B will be a inner product of a row matrix. Let's say this will be one by n if the The dimension of the vector space is n dimensional vector space. Then it will be one by n. a will be one by n matrix, and b will be n by one column matrix. And if I simply take a matrix multiplication, that time so this will be a one star, a two star, so on and so forth. This will be b one, b two, b three, and so on and so forth. So the matrix multiplication will give me. A one star, B one plus A two star, 
B2 plus D3 star D3 and so on and so forth. This is the inner product. That's what we required, right? We require something to mimic a dot product representation. Something like this. Okay? So it mimics this mimics dot product like thing. And do I cared about what kind of vector space I have right here? It doesn't matter. I can choose any vectors. This vector can be it can belong to anything. It can belong to let's say Euclidean vectors, it can belong to matrices, it can belong to some discrete vector space as well. It doesn't matter. The inner product is defined something like this, similar to our dot product with the Euclidean vector space. And we don't have any reference to what kind of vector space we are dealing with. The only disadvantage of this particular method is that in the choice of basis vector is not unique, the representation of A and B will not be unique. It will vary from person to person. And the mathematics that I am going are doing may seem a little bit off to somewhere else. That is the only disadvantage. But obviously you can readily say that okay, these are the basis vector that I am dealing with. At that time, once it is specified, every, anybody can understand what, what, you are, what you are doing. You see, the matrix representation of vectors is how much powerful. So now, I don't have any reference to what kind of vector space I'm using. I don't care about what kind of operation I need to be, use for inner product. I can simply use a matrix multiplication. And I can have the inner product something like this. Let me remember one thing. Whatever we are going to do today, it is only valid for discrete basis vector space. Obviously, for continuous basis vector space, also we will have something similar, but not the same thing. Most important thing to note down is we are dealing with discrete basis vector space. So, I can use a matrix representation for discrete basis vector space only. If I have continuous basis vector space, that time I cannot use matrix representation of vector space. And discrete basis vector space, I can represent a gate as a column matrix. So, matrix and a bra as a row matrix. Also, Bra is nothing but complex adjoint of K. So, if I have A is equal to A1, A2, A3 and so on and so forth, then Bra A will be equal to A1 star, A2 star, A3 star and so on and so forth. A dot B will be simply matrix multiplication of row matrix into a column matrix which will give me a scalar number. Also we are going to use a orthonormal basis vector. Now, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, so on and so forth as my basis vectors. This basis vector is said to be orthonormal if and only if this condition is satisfied. Inner product of phi i with phi j should give me delta i j. This is called as combinator delta and delta i j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j and delta i j is equal to 0 otherwise so 5 1 into 5 1 will give me 1 
Phi 3 into Phi 3 will give me 1. Phi 3 into Phi 3 will give me 1. But Phi 1 in equal to 2 Phi 3 will give me 0. Phi 1 in equal to 2 Phi 3 will give me 0. And so on and so forth. So the inner product of the same vector is 1. But we have a different vector that is 0. So that's orthonormal condition. So this is called as orthonormality condition. Let's work out some examples on these concepts. Suppose I have phi1 as 2 phi1 plus 3 plus i phi2 plus 3i phi3 and psi2 as 3i phi1 plus 4 phi2 plus 1 plus i phi3 so what we are going to do we are going to look at how vector addition and inner product operation will look if I take and if I represent this vector as column matrix in terms of column matrix psi1 will be equal to a1 is 2 so 2 a2 will be 3 plus i so 3 plus i and phi 3 will be equal to 3i so this is my psi1 and my psi2 will be equal to the first component will be 3i 3i second component will be 4 4 and the third component will be 1 plus i now what will be psi1 plus psi2 psi1 plus psi2 will be this whole term plus this whole term now if i take phi1 common what i'm going to get i'm going to get 2 plus 3i phi1 if i take phi2 common what i'm going to get i'm going to get 7 plus i phi2 plus if i take phi3 component common i'm going to get 1 plus 4i phi3 right this is what psi1 plus psi2 is using this matrices form what will be my psi1 plus so adding these two matrices it will give me 2 plus 3i 7 plus i and 4 plus i oh sorry one plus four i isn't it this matrix representation of this vector psi one plus psi two vector two plus three i they are two plus three i seven plus i seven plus i one plus four i one plus four i okay so even if i add the vectors using normal vector as a whole vector or even if I use metric representation now what will be brass psi1 and psi2 I know that brass psi1 will be equal to will be equal to complex adjoint of kate psi1 and since this is not a matrix so i need to take complex conjugate of this particular quantity so that would do uh, phi1 plus psi2 plus psi3 plus psi4 plus that would be minus 3i phi bra phi 3 and what will be bra psi 2 
minus 3i bra 5 1 plus 4 bra 5 2 plus 1 minus i bra 5 3 in the matrix form in the matrix form also bra psi 1 will be equal to adjoint of I1 so that would be transpose and complex conjugate so this will be our matrix 2 this element will be 2 second element will be 3 minus i and the last element will be minus 3i similarly brass i2 will be equal to the first element will be minus 3i second element will be 4 the last element will be 1 minus i if you compare with these vectors you will see indeed it is the representation this is the first element is 2 second element is 3 minus i and the last element is 3 so 2 3 minus i minus 3 i psi 2 pi as well first element will be minus 3 i second element will be 4 last element will be 1 minus i minus 3 i 4 1 minus i so the same thing now what will be inner product of psi 1 psi 2 equal to inner product of psi 1 psi 2 will be equal to bra psi 1 which is nothing but 2 psi 1 plus 3 minus i psi 2 minus 3 i psi 3 and it is inner protected with gate psi 2 which is 3i phi 1 plus 4 phi 2 plus 1 plus i phi 3 so what that will be equal to So that would be equal to the first component phi 1 2 phi 1 I need to multiply with all the vectors so that will be 2 times 3i 2 from here 3i from here phi 1 inner product with phi 1 plus 2 times this is 2 4 multiplied by 4 inner phi 1 inner product with phi 2 plus 2 times 2 times 1 plus 3i so that will be 2 plus 2i 2 plus 2i phi 1 phi 3 plus minus plus 3i into this 3i so 3i into 3 minus i phi 2 this is plus phi 1 plus this 3 plus i inner product with 4 so 4 times 3 minus i phi 2 inner product with phi 2 plus this minus 3 i inner product with all of this vector so that would be minus 3 i into 3i phi 3 in order to with phi 1 plus minus 3i inner product with 4 uh, multiplied by 4 phi 3 phi 2 
plus minus 3i inner product with 1 plus i 5 3 Okay. Now, as these are orthonormal basis, phi i phi j will be equal to delta i j. So, all the cross terms phi uh, 1 inner product with phi 2, phi 1 inner product with phi 3, and so on and so forth, they, those will be 0. So, at the end, what I am going to get is I am going to get only phi 1 phi 1 inner product term. 5252 2 inner product term and 5353 3 inner product term so that would give me psi 1 psi 2 is equal to 5151 5 inner product term this will be this is the 5151 5 inner product term so that would give me 6i inner product of 51 with 51 is 1 similarly this term will give me 0 this term will give me 0 because these are 5 1 5 2 5 1 5 3 okay similarly this term will give me 0 5 2 5 1 the next term will be 4 times 3 i 5 2 5 2 so that would give me 12 minus 4 i plus this term 5 3 5 5 2 5 3 term will be equal to 0 this term will be equal to 0 0 and I am only going to get a non zero term non zero term so that would be minus 3i 3i minus i minus 3i into i that would be plus 3 correct so psi 1 inner product with psi 2 will be equal to Now you will realize why we are using orthonormal basis vectors. We are using orthonormal basis vector just to get rid of these particular terms and to make the inner product cross terms equal to zero. If that is not the case, circulation from matrix representation and the vector representation will not match with each other. Okay, let's see using this matrices representation what will be psi 1 psi 2. So bra psi 1 inner product with k psi 2 will be equal to what is bra psi 1 this is my bra psi 1 so bra psi 1 is 2 3 minus i minus 3 i and my k psi 2 is this 3 i 1 plus i 1 plus oh sorry this 3i 4 1 plus i so this would be this multiplied with this so 2 into 3i that would give me 6i plus 3i into 4 that would give me 12 minus 4i and minus 3i with 1 plus i so that would give me minus 3i plus 3 if you look carefully whatever I have got over here is over here so this would be equal which one is more simpler obviously the matrix calculation is much simpler because I no, need not worry about these products I need not I, I I don't need to represent my vectors in this inner product form now one might also say that okay it was working because you have converted you have used actual vectors in the basis forms and that's why it is working so let's take another example 
and this time we are going to take an example from matrix 2 by 2 matrix let's take a 2 by 2 matrix example suppose i have two vectors let me call it as psi 1 which is equal to 4 5 2 1 and psi 2 which is equal to 3 minus 1 minus 2 0 some random numbers I have chosen you can choose any random numbers okay now can I use the same matrix representation for these vectors these are vectors and I'm going to represent them in a matrix forms so what are the basis for these 2 by 2 matrices we have seen that for 2 by 2 matrices the dimension is 4 dimensional 2 by 2 matrix space is 4 dimensional matrix space so I need to have 4 basis vectors let me choose this as a basis vector 1 0 0 0 this is my first basis vector the second basis vector is 0 1 0 0 the third basis vector is 0 0 1 0 and the last is 0 0 0 1 these are my basis so let me, this is phi 1 this is phi 2 this is phi 3 and this is phi 4 first i need to prove that these matrices are orthonormal matrices because we are going to use orthonormal matrices so for that what i need to do is i need to have phi 1 phi 1 should be equal to 1 now there are two ways of doing this particular thing i can do the inner product of phi 1 with phi 2 something like this in a traditional way in a traditional way inner product of phi 1 with phi 1 is trace of the product matrix so that would be equal to 1 0 0 0 I have taken transpose and complex only this is adjoint of complex adjoint of phi 1 multiply it with this is trace of the matrix itself so this will give me matrix multiplication will give me 1 0 0 0 this is the I need to take a trace so trace will be the addition of these elements so that will give me 1 with 5 1 and I also need no product of 5 1 with 5 2 or any other vector is 0 so 5 1 with 5 2 will be equal to 1 0 0 0 in a product with this is adjoint complex adjoint of 5 1 0 1 0 0 so this will give me 0 plus 0 0 0 which is equal to 0 trace of okay. this is one way of doing it another way of doing this is I'm going to represent the basis vector itself in terms of basis vector so I'm going to represent phi 1 something like this 1 times phi 1 plus 0 times phi 2 plus 0 times phi 3 plus 0 times phi 4 right so in terms of matrices my phi 1 will be equal to component of phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 phi 4 so 1 0 0 0 similarly phi 2 will be given by 0 1 0 0 and so on and so forth you can calculate for 5 3 and 5 4 so let's talk about what will be 
inner product of phi 1 with phi 1 will be inner product of phi 1 with phi 1 will be 1 0 0 0 and 0 1 0 0 and this will give me phi 1 with phi 2 is equal to 0 similarly phi 1 with phi 1 will be equal to 1 0 0 0 multiplied by a column matrix 1 0 0 0 which will give me 1 so again you see that this method is much simpler please note that what we have done over here if you are using matrices uh, sorry if you are using basis vectors in some manipulations of a vector and if you are using let's say matrix representation of vectors then these basis vectors also need to be converted into the matrix form the matrix form okay so you can prove that these basis that I have chosen is orthonormal okay so you can have that as a problem prove this basis is orthonormal now let's do our usual thing so psi1 is equal to 4 pi 2 1 psi2 we have chosen as 3 minus 1 minus 2 0 okay So in the matrix form, bra psi 1, sorry, k psi 1 will be equal to 4 pi u 2 1, a column matrix, and k psi 2 will be equal to 3 minus 1 minus 2 and 0 right this is the matrix representation and i am going to use a basis vectors that i have shown earlier so these are my basis vectors phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 and phi 4 now let's do the vector addition using this matrix form this vector form and then matrix representation of the vectors so psi1 plus psi2 will be how much psi1 plus psi2 will be addition of this vector asset so that would be 4 plus 3 7 5 minus 1 is 4 2 minus 2 is 0 1 plus 0 is 1 and what is using this particular form it will be psi 1 plus psi 2 using matrix representation it will be simply equal to 7 4 0 1 isn't it the matrix representation of this vector using the basis that we have chosen okay so it does it does match with each other now what will be inner product of psi 1 with psi 2 now for that i need to have bra psi 1 bra psi 1 will be transpose and complex conjugate of this psi 1 so this will be equal to inner product of 4 5 2 1 multiplied by psi 2 3 minus 1 minus 2 0 and I need to take a trace of this so that would be trace of product so 4 into 3 will be 12 plus 4 into minus 4 will be equal to minus 4 12 minus 4 
the second element will be minus 4 plus 0 the next element will be 15 5 into 3 plus 1 into minus 2 minus 2 again minus 5 plus 0 so that would be equal to trace of 8 minus 4 17 minus 5 so that would be equal to 8 minus 5 which is equal to 3 so using the actual net response the inner product is equal to 3 now let's see what will be the inner product using this matrix representation psi 1 psi 2 will be equal to now bra psi 1 will be equal to row matrix 4 5 2 1 and gate psi 2 will be equal to 3 minus 1 minus 2 0 so that would be equal to 12 plus minus 5 plus minus 4 plus 0 so that would be 12 minus 9 which is equal to 3 so see the inner product of our hand does match each other which one is simpler obviously the matrix representation of vector is much 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 i have provided you some problems in the video description you can solve those particular problems let's discuss more about this matrix representation vectors in matrix form now if i have some vectors let's say a in order to represent that vectors in the matrix form first thing that you need is you need the first thing is ortho normal basis you can obtain an ortho normal basis by what is known as gram smith method you can find that in any book but we now consider that we have a orthonormal basis so you need to represent this vector a in terms of orthonormal basis vectors something like a phi 1 plus b phi 2 plus c phi 3 plus 1 and so forth then you represent gate a as a column matrix using the coefficients of this phi 1 phi 2 and phi 3 so the first element will be coefficient of phi 1 a second element of this matrix will be coefficient of phi 2 which is equal to b third a element will be coefficient of phi 3 which is equal to c and so on and so forth so this is my bra a in matrix form please note bra is a column matrix similarly if i have a row matrix i just need to take a complex adjoint so basically complex adjoint of this a gate a so that would be a star b star c star and so on and so forth so my bra is a row matrix in matrix form Also, I need to represent this phi 1 as well, whatever the basis vector that I am using phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, they also need to be represented in a matrix form. So, phi 2 also need to be represented in matrix form. If you don't represent this phi 1 and phi 2 in a matrix form and try to do some, do some mathematics using this basis vectors then you will you may get 
some wrong answer. As an example, suppose I am talking about two by two vectors, and my vector is one, three, four, five, and I want to use a basis one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero and zero 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 one. This is my basis. Then this this is vector A. This A in matrix form will be equal to one, three, four, five. Obviously, I can represent A as one times five one plus three times five two plus four times five three plus five times by four correct so these are the coefficient one three four five that I have represented in matrix form okay. but I also need to represent pi one as one zero 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 five two as zero one zero zero five three as zero zero one zero and five four as 0, 0, 0, 1. I cannot use them as these or in the original form. Where do you need this representation? When you represent, when you have to deal with what is known as projection operator. Or the completeness condition. We will be discussing about operators in more detail in the next lecture, in the next video. But for the time being, please remember this particular thing. You also need to represent your work. Thank you for your attention. We will see you in the next lecture where we are going to discuss about operators and then we will be discussing about in next few lectures we will be discussing only about operators how we can represent operators how we can have a matrix form uh, represent operators in a matrix form what are operators what are their properties we will be discussing that in a couple of lectures next couple of lectures and then we will be discussing about what what we what we need to do if the basis vectors are continuous thank you for your